Welcome back to another outdoor walking switched to Linux. And today we're going to talk briefly about GNOME because there's going to be some upcoming changes you are going to want to be aware of. Now, first and foremost, as many of you, if you follow my channel, know I'm not a huge fan of GNOME. Some of it's just the UI. Uh, I, I just, I'm of that older generation. I just like the combination of mouse and keyboard that I get out of Cinnamon and things like that. But that really is a subjective user uh, opinion. So I'm not saying GNOME is bad, except on a technical level, one of the challenges with GNOME is it does not feel like it is a complete operating system sometimes because it is so bare boned that you can't do basic things like put favorites on a panel that's accessible without accessing your main user menu. Now, to be fair to GNOME, it's really designed to use keyboard structures, in which case it doesn't really make much of a difference. You can just quickly click in the, just click your, your meta key and then type the first couple characters of the app you want. So eh, maybe that's a moot point. The point is though, is that the dome system itself has become so bare boned that most people cannot use it without extensions, even though they are starting to slowly add things back in. For example, they are working with the Miracast tools to add those into the system. And I did a couple videos at that, looking at what they're trying to do and then experimenting with that tool that, well, we'll put it this way. I think that GNOME should probably shift its priorities to other places rather than placing the Miracast GNOME network stack um, into the core because I don't actually think it works well uh, in my tests and other people have told me as such. The problem we have with though is that GNOME has become so bare bones that most people have to use extensions just to make it usable. In fact, if you uh, tell people now like, hey, what do you think about GNOME? They think GNOME is awesome. You see their system and most people are going to have a number of extensions installed because they cannot live with a system without it. Well, GNOME 45 is right around the corner and they're all excited about it, but they're not really telling you on the surface, other people are, yeah, GNOME 45 is gonna break every old extension. Zero back compatibility, which means as soon as GNOME 45 rolls out and you're reliant on all of these extensions, you had better hope that the developers behind your extension are just on the ball and are porting their extension for GNOME 45. Zero back compatibility, it is all going to break. Now, why is this happening? It's happening because GNOME is changing the rendering engine for the JavaScripting, which is done, uh, the JavaScripting is used to run all the extension management ports from importing, executing, and things like that. And they used to use a system called GJS, which is in the current GNOME implementations. The challenge we have though, is that they are changing that entire thing without any form of backward compatibility out of the box. Unless of course we raise enough awareness and they're like, okay, maybe we should uh, slowly roll this out, give developers, uh, you know, six months, year, maybe longer to work on getting everything ported so that everything works out. Because the reality is right now, what's gonna happen like usually happens when some major incompatibility shifts, what's gonna end up happening is that people are going to roll up to it. They're not gonna be as aware of these things. You're running an OpenSUSE Leap or an Arch that just automatically upgrades to GNOME 45 very shortly. Then what's gonna happen is um, everything is going to break. And then they're gonna be like, what's going on? And then they'll start investigating this and figure out that, um, yeah, the, the problem is widespread because of this and everybody's extensions are all going to break. So just be aware of that. If you are using GNOME, using extensions, you're gonna to wanna to audit all of those extensions before pushing any um, uh, pushing any of the major updates to the next latest and greatest versions. So 
that is what we uh, want to mention here on this brief little video. And uh, with that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed these outdoor uh, switch to Linux tops uh, talks on the latest news stuff. I'll have this article down below. I'll go ahead and have a look at that. And uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you all next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.